Hello there, and welcome to the Geek ETC podcast. I am Josh. And I'm John. And welcome to the first episode. This is a podcast basically covering all things geek-related, things we geek out about, stuff we're interested in. It's going to be a culmination of varying topics and uh, interests. Lots of stuff we'll go over... Uh, movies, TV shows, video games. And, and it's coming from the uh, point of view of two guys who have been best friends for a long time. Yeah, I mean, close to I mean, more than 15 years more at this point. More than 15 years, 100%, yeah. Pretty much half our lives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you will take an interest in it and uh, stick around for us. So I had a weird question that I uh, brought up the other day. If a vampire were to suck your blood okay, and it gets a blood clot, is that similar to like a boba tea? You know, I, th I think the, 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 the vampire probably has an anticoagulation like in saliva, just like a mosquito to eliminate that kind of thing. Do mosquitoes have that? Yeah. They would like, they have a thing that keeps the blood from clotting. So that way they can keep pulling it out. Interesting. So um, I th I think a vampire being an apex blood predator would would have that kind yeah, of built. The question in. is, I was, is proposed to me was if it's closer to like a boba tea or an ice cube, and I, I like I figured it was more to it, like a boba tea. I would agree, boba tea. In, in the world where the vampire is not doing as well uh, and it's not evolved to its maybe early vampires, mm. um, and they've been around for so long, maybe that's where they got the idea from boba tea. Could be. And then similarly, alongside that, uh, the question was proposed, it, if someone had, uh, I mean, obviously the, the time of grills, you know, was obviously more popular back in the early 2000s, you know, you have the modified, you know, silver gold teeth or whatever. Could someone with a silver grill kill a werewolf by biting it? Because mm. the whole thing with werewolves is, you know, they bite you and you turn into a werewolf. So if Paul Could you then Wall, bite them back? If Paul Wall encounters <laughs> a werewolf... <laughs> Uh, with Brooke Hogan, <laughs> then yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, I, you know, as a uh, me sucker, I'll bite you back. As a Dungeons and Dragons dungeon master, I would definitely uh, let you roll for that attack, and I'd probably give you full damage on it. Oh, dude, I totally want to make a do with a grill now. It just that's his weapon, like a natural <laughs> yeah. bite, but with a yeah, that you have like a bite attack, but it's you just have like a silver grill. <laughs> it's interchangeable. And you know, if you went into a town that you know didn't allow silvered weapons or whatever a la curse of strahd you know they can't take your teeth no no and they're not going to look in your mouth probably so and if they do you're just iced out and that's probably okay right you just look super fancy and you could obviously roll like with advantage on persuasion saying well it's molded to my mouth specifications so you wouldn't even look good in it that's a good point but yeah that was the <laughs> question that was proposed the other day to me I thought it was an interesting concept of her uh, uh, werewolf thing. I didn't, yeah, that'd be a cool D&D character too, though. Uh, you know, I, I think it depends on the werewolf and what what uh, universe we're coming from. Because it's, uh, I think if you bit like a uh, underworld vampire, it would probably just rip your spine out while you were like latched onto it. How are those vampires different from, I don't, werewolves. it's been for, like lichens or, or werewolves, sorry. Lichens. Those have been, I'm even wondering were not there multiple underworlds? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I've only seen, like, part of the first one on TV at some point kind of thing. It is through. very much a TV movie, yeah. Right. Like like FX or TBS, like, at 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Wasn't that, like, an early 2000s thing as well? Mm -hmm. Like, around the time of, like, when Evanescence was huge. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of associate those two yeah, in my head. Exactly. You go from VH1, watching an Evanescence uh, music video, straight to... A uh, straight to a werewolf uh, versus vampire show. Oh, it's two thousand three. Okay, yeah, yep. And I think it was on TV very shortly afterwards. Yes, it, that, that, yeah. There was Underworld, Underworld Evolution. That was another another one in the series. And I think there was one that was like an origin story where it was like going back to the werewolves, like their whole fight for freedom, and they were wearing armor and stuff, but still starring some of the same vampire cast. Uh, there's Evolution, Rise of Lycans, <laughs> Awakening, and Blood Wars. 
<laughs> Somebody <laughs> stole Blood Wars, and that's you know. Take is that kind of like Beast Wars? It, well, don't did you see that? Did Wars. you see the trailer? I've not yet. No. Oh my god! Does it look good? It's so. I, I, I think as soon as the Transformers series, those movies came out, like everybody who was into it was like screaming for Beast Wars. Because oh, yeah. like I remember that series back in the that must have been late nineties. Nineties for sure, yeah. Um, but that was like awesome when they're like, oh, they're not trucks and cars; they're gorillas and cheetahs and 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 the wasp one that was oh, one of wasp. my wasp or whatever. Was he the is. the new like Star Scream? <laughs> maybe so yeah, i think yeah. he's like the annoying like yes he the was screechy character guy very much the annoying guy yeah oh and and but he had a cool gun and that's why i liked about him oh right i remember i had the toy for the cheetah guy but it was like one of the like premium toys so it was like you know 12 inches it was like a foot like it was a huge freaking thing to transform into the guy and stuff i had a bunch of those toys though but yeah so they there's a new trailer for the next transformers movie this movie. what is this like 10 or something seven eight at this point i stopped as soon as mark Wahlberg got involved i just lost all interest you know yeah i think i saw the first two maybe. for sure yeah first two yeah. that were like oh interesting you know yeah i think i saw the... <laughs> that we started adding like uh the uh <laughs> we started having green days you know specific music with it and right that that was on uh so there was transformers revenge of the fallen and then dark of the moon Dark of the Moon, I think, was when Green Day <laughs> 21, came in. Guns. 21 Guns yes, came yeah. in. And so, yeah, I, I saw the first two. That would be 2009, but then I didn't see, in 2011, I didn't see that third one. I feel bad. I feel like I was younger than I was when I first saw those, but now that I'm like, oh, I was kind of, I was working on adulthood then. Yeah, right, thinking about that. like, But, but our options weren't as good back then. It's true. You know? And so the, the last movie that came out was in 2018, Bumblebee. Didn't, didn't see that one. <laughs> no, I'm not seven, so I didn't no, see it. Yeah, I didn't but either. It, you know what? If there is somebody that really liked the Bumblebee movie, you right. know, let us yeah, know. To each their own. To each know, their own. It yeah. might have been a good movie. Like I said, I haven't seen it, so I'm just kind of judging a book by its cover. Um, but it might also suck. So, yeah, I've grown I've grown weary of a lot of the Hollywood CGI. You know, obviously Michael Bay, big explosions. You know, right. slow motion CGI stuff. It just uh, it kills me. Um, well, anytime I see practical effects in a movie now, it like it stands out as being awesome. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like uh, I was watching a uh, Jurassic world dominion at home the other day with oh, my kid yeah. and, um, I've got, I've got a six year old who loves dinosaurs. And of course he got the, the dinosaur set for Christmas, you know, mm. from that movie. Right. Right. So we watched it. Um, and, and I'm, I'm fine making Jurassic park or Jurassic world, a Christmas movie, just like die hard. But, uh, that is a Christmas movie. We do not have is. to debate you, that. That's true. No, I'm saying that you can, yeah. you can, anything is a Chris. I feel like as long as there's nostalgia to it and it gives you, lowers your blood pressure, it's a good Christmas movie. <laughs> Die Hard lowers your blood pressure. You heard oh, it here. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> He's Doctor. crawling through air vents with an MP5 or like an M9. I forget what it was. He had. He, well, he, uh, now I've got a machine gun. He did get an MP5. MP5 exactly. Point. Yeah. But, uh, you know, for sure. So, you know, watching the Raptors in that, the first time I watched it, I wasn't really paying attention, but the second time I had this time watching it with my kid, he was into it and I really was. And I was playing around my phone and I would look up and I would see this Raptor, like the baby Raptor running spoiler alert. There's babies. <gasps> and, uh, they, uh, it looks so bad. It, oh, looks, really? it looks horrible, you know? And I think that's one of the issues with like some of these, you know, big studios is they know they can get away with it and we're just going to consume it. Because it's a specific property and stuff, again, some things like Jurassic Park, Transformers, those kinds of things, like, there's always going to be new generations of kids that their families are going to take them to go see and whatnot, so they're always going to make money. Oh, yeah. And that's that's why I would hope with Beast Wars, too, is obviously, you know, they can't turn a person or, you know, they can't turn a animal into a robot necessarily, practically, right. like that easily. But, you know what, I really would love to see... Um, some really well thought out CGI with it. Cause it is like, that is one of my favorite childhood cartoons. Right. And I guarantee you like, because of the negative stigma that a lot of these have got, I'm wondering if they've made this as a, like try to just pull on nostalgia strings yeah. to, to get some of that older audience back in there and interested. Yeah. I don't know that it's going to work for me, but in, in the trailer, did it look like it was like prehistoric? Like the original thing was cause no, I mean, it's still modern day. 
so that Megatron's a is, there's is a new threat. Okay, as there always is, there's some new threat, and they and so like you know in the show in the cartoon the old Transformers were transformed, no pun intended, into animal versions of themselves. Mm-hmm. Like Optimus Prime was still the same. Like he was still Optimus Prime, but he was just an ape. Yeah, he was, he was a, a gorilla. gorilla. Yeah. In so, this, it's two different characters. Oh. Optimus Prime is still himself, but uh-huh. at least from, I've watched the trailer once, so this is going off some bad memory. But then I think there's a, another like leader of the animal Transformers, and he's a different guy, but he's still a monkey. And Optimus Prime is in a, is a semi truck form, and he looks at the cheetah. He's still going faster. He's like, maybe, <laughs> maybe this is the not this is the B team that's been sent right. from uh, Cyber World or whatever. Were they from Cyber Tron? Were they from Cybertron? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that kind of makes me sad because I mean I wanted to see like the classic. You know, I liked it when there was the the dinosaurs. I liked Megatron being a T Rex. I don't think they showed Megatron in the trailer. That may be like something they're saving for like a later, uh, or maybe they did. I'm gonna have to watch it again, but uh, I don't remember seeing a T Rex anywhere in it. So that might be something for a later teaser trailer or like a you know surprise kind of thing in the in the movie. But um, I did see a cheetah for sure. <laughs> okay, well let's go. <laughs> I'm sure they'll have the wasp and then it'll, everything else will just be kind of, uh, I mean, I, I imagine they're going to kill it. They're going to, they're just going to murder my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> just, they're going to stick that stinger right in there. But movies have never done that before with anything. No. no. Any video game movie that's existed. Oh man. You know, and we've been playing Halo recently. Uh, Halo Infinite. In Halo Infinite. Yeah. The, just started uh, the co-op campaign on that. And fun i enjoy it so far it's a little bit it's not some of the weapons and things are a little lackluster for me like i'm not enjoying it as much as some of like the old school stuff but true um and we've we've only just got into it though so there's still more to i've already played through it once but i'm playing through it through a second time and there is still more that we haven't seen yet sure yeah yeah but but for me you know uh speaking of halo the you didn't watch the Paramount series, yet, did you? Oh, no. Oh, my god. Because, again, I've been so burned and ruined on so many of these TV adaptations or movies of video games or other things that I just I didn't even bother watching it. It was so, you know, there was, we went on these, there was these storylines that branched off into different places that, you know, I wanted to see John 117. I wanted him to keep his helmet on. I wanted him to be the tough guy. And I wanted to see him being a hero. Yeah. Maybe with some, like human uh like him having to find his humanity a little bit in certain things and maybe becoming uh growing as a character but um right. yeah the was it a, like a prequel kind of deal like an it older is, thing it's pre-reach so it's, it's pre-fall oh. of reach i think it takes place on reach for the most part like it's it has the you know halsey and all that stuff right, going right. on um but you know first episode dude's taking his helmet off you know well, and the whole reason they said they couldn't get the voice actor for master chief is because he couldn't physically play the guy and i guess you know with the understanding just taking his helmet off it you know he'd be this old man but again master chief he is this unknown character like he leaves his helmet on in all the games and I, like as a way you know for people to relate to him kind of that he's not particularly identified in any particular type of person you know what? I never, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, because you could be. Yeah, it's, there's yeah. without the helmet on, obviously with the male voice. But yeah. there's, yeah, that's a good but point. You may not, you know, relate to him as much, but keeping the anonymity there, you know, that that's, that happens a lot in games. You know, where you never actually see yourself, or your character never even talks in a lot of things, and that's you know designed so that you can better relate to that character and kind of you know immerse yourself and put yourself in that situation. Yeah. That's that's a good point. And I know that in Hollywood, especially, they like to take people's helmet. Like, you know, the likelihood of somebody taking their helmet off in a battle, you know, in antiquity or in the Middle Ages is pretty low, you know, because mm-hmm. you don't want to get hit with something in the head. Right. You know, that's not what you want to do. But I understand they have the, they pay these actors a lot of money and they want to show them. I and they, that's the whole point of the kind of Hollywood thing is like this exposure, you know, you being an actor in Hollywood and stuff, you want to have exposure. So if, if, I remember the same kind of deal happened in uh Mandalorian, mm-hmm. you know, that there was a whole thing there. They made a whole stink about it. You never take your helmet off. And then he does all the time because they wanted to show his face yes. so that he could get that recognition as an actor. And I kind of understand that to a point, but 
Well, I don't understand. And, you know, we're going on, you know, talking about helmets and movies. I don't understand why all of a sudden, yeah, the Mandalorians aren't taking their helmet. Now, I like that they did revise that later. Like, they kind of retcon that a little bit with... uh What's her face? God, the girl who played Starbuck. Oh, right. From she, uh, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, when she came in and she played that character from the Clone Wars. But we have all this lore, you know, the, all this stuff that existed. And you've got ongoing shows like Rebels with Sabine Wren playing a Mandalorian. And she has her helmet off all the time. And if this is your first intro into the Star Wars world and it has a cute little green guy, you're going to be really confused when you watch other stuff. And it's really not that big a deal to have your helmet off. You know, Katie Sackoff, Katie Sackoff. Starbuck, big fan of Katie Sackoff. She does a great job, but yeah, that's, it, it's one of those things where I was a little disappointed. I was like, well, I'm not familiar with this. I feel like I'm a, I'm, I know more about star Wars than the average person, you know, like mm. I don't know everything. I've not read every book. I don't know. Right. I've not read every legends book. I watched clone wars. I watched rebels, you know, still need to get through clone wars. I got through a good bit of it, but I need to finish that the last episodes are a lot the, the really like ahsoka the like the kind of ending with it and you kind of see these missed moments between her and anakin oh he's yeah. like downfall and she almost thinks that like man if she could have been a part of it there's some good there's some pretty sad moments in it too you know for what's considered a car like you know a child's cartoon the helmets are, are always kind of a a very iconic thing in any kind of media and stuff like you know so many people like cosplayers and stuff like that's always you know a big thing is to like they'll spit you know the costume is one thing but like getting the helmet right that is such an recognizable thing of different helmets you know whether it be like master chief's helmet or like a mass effect helmet or you know samus and, kind of and we see that in merchandise too you know a lot of times right. that is the iconic thing that i i'm pretty sure i've seen plenty of t-shirts where there's a just a Master Chief helmet right. on the well, thing. And the number of helmets that have voice changers in them. Oh, yeah. And stuff, Stormtrooper helmets, Darth Vader helmets, Power Rangers things, all that stuff. And that's a good point. You know, talking about Darth Vader, why couldn't they have done that with that actor? Had Master Chief voice. You don't have to see his lips moving inside the helmet. Just like Darth Vader right. had James Earl Jones exactly. voice, but he was played by a different actor, you know? And, I mean, so was freaking Boba Fett. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I feel like they should have, they could have just kept his anonymity. Cause like there's been a lot of fan made Halo stuff um, that was awesome and they did a really good job on and he never took off his helmet. Yeah. I, th you know, I think, I think some type of platform where fan made things are able to license or get, you know, there's, there's definitely that gate there that keeps people from getting into it, you know, from being able to like make fan-made things into movies, right? There's licensing, copyrights, all this other stuff. People own the brand. But I think if bigger studios had to compete with actual fans, people who put their, like, blood, sweat, tears, who watch this stuff every single day, who care about it versus the actual money, I think that's a... Um, I think that'd be interesting. If there was some type of platform or some type mm. of, like, open license uh, for some things that would really allow these studios to, to have to compete and have to keep track of it and have to really put the work in to, you know, keep it up. Right. But I feel like a lot of days now, I mean, Hollywood is really having to compete with a lot of the amateur market. You know, some of the short films and things that come out on YouTube are like mind blowing, even down to like, a, again, a CG aspect. I don't know if, it's because, you know, these people don't have quite time constraints that some Hollywood studios have to, you know, get movies out and stuff. They can work on them for years, but some of the stuff people are coming up with, all these tools, the animation tools, all this stuff is very easily accessible to everybody nowadays. That making a movie, especially the CGI one, is no big deal now. Yeah, and anybody yeah. can do it. And you see that with like Love, Death, and Robots or something like that, you know, where you where you watch that and it has all those different shorts. And I'm not mm -hmm. sure how many of those are studio produced versus mm -hmm. our amateur, but I, I, they all seem like they have some like submission. I heard aspect. about that, but I never saw it. There's so it's uh, you not watched it at all. Mm -mm. So Love, Death, and Robots, it's on Netflix. They're like a short episodes, usually 20, 30 minutes or less. They're typically sci-fi related, which is a lot of fun. And each episode is unique. You can watch them in any order for the most part. And oh, it's made by Blur. Yeah, and they use different art styles. There's different CGI stuff. There's different... Um, every episode feels unique. There's one... In the first season, I really, really enjoyed, and it was Russian infantry patrol in World War II, and they are in Russia 
and they're coming across all these slain people in this this destroyed village, and you, you, you it's very obviously World War II era stuff, and like very uniforms. They've got PPSHs and Mosin Nagants, and a uh, God, I forgot what their light machine gun was called, but they have all those things, and what they're hunting is these monsters, these like alien type monsters that are there that were like summoned through like this witchcraft ritual or whatever. And we're mm. getting this giant firefight, super gory, super well animated, looks amazing, you know, like on par with anything else you get out there. And yeah, I mean, it's, I, I would love to see those kind of small things. I, I feel like some things, if you can't CGI well enough to where it looks good, let's just go animation with it, you know? Hmm. Yeah, don't don't try to get the realism, the uncanny valley of the CGI and stuff, and just yeah, animate it. Yes, because I know. Uh, I mean, some of the animated stuff that like nowadays is really killer. Like the animation that they have. There, for instance, I know that I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I want to watch it on. They have that uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners mm-hmm. that came out that that like did r- amazing, from what I understand. Yeah, that's you know an, an anime type of thing. And I remember seeing that. I think I remember seeing like a behind the scenes thing for like Titan AE or something back in the day. And they were talking about like how CGI actors, like these types of people are like the future. And I I really think that they are like such a competitor that sometimes they, they, they're like, Hey, let's do, instead of doing like a halo animated series, let's do a mediocre job. If you can call it mediocre on Paramount plus. Right. But those are those are good. There's there's a bunch of different episodes. Some of them are really silly, you know. Like one of them is, it's like uh, there's a farmer and he keeps killing the rats, or he keeps going after the rats, and the rats keep evolving and they've got their own little society with, you know, weapons. And, oh, so they're like re- evolving they have a, a rebellion. Yeah, exactly. In his barn, you know, there's one where there's like you know the classic tiny little world. Like the people open their freezer and there's an entire like you know, ecumenopolis like oh. world and then they wind, you know, they, they're watching them grow up and then they start nuking each other. And, oh my gosh. You know, I'm in black where the entire world is in a marble. Yeah. I think Futurama had a similar thing. Like Bender wound up getting something on his back, like very similar, you know, but it's, it's a lot of fun. They do a really good job. All the different animation styles are different. They're really short. They're really easy to get in and out of. Right. That's funny. That reminded me of a thing that's in high on life that new game the you know from the people who made rick and morty a little bit of a spoiler but uh, you can get these uh warp discs that are, are they're just kind of little like side experiences you can have and stuff and you can like you can go to this particular thing and warp in a, a chunk of land that has something like one of them you can warp in a movie theater and you go in the movie theater and they have like if you sit there it will legit play an entire full-length feature movie <laughs> wow! And if you just sit there and you, it'll watch like the whole hour and a half movie. Wow. It's some like like C movie, you know, C rate movie that's they they bought the rights to. Oh, for okay. The game. So yeah, they bought the rights to play the entire movie. So it's not like a Grand Theft Auto fifteen minute thing that you can go. No, no, it's an actual like, uh, you know, mystery science theater. Well, on top of that, when you go in the theater, they have three NPCs sitting in the front row that talk the entire movie. <laughs> yeah, they'll sit there and talk and like. You know, the whole aspect of the thing is like you have these guns that talk to you and stuff and that sound like uh, Morty from Rick and Morty and stuff. And he even comments, he's like, are these guys just going to talk the whole time <laughs> and whatnot? And yeah, they'll sit there and commentate on the whole movie. And if you sit there for the whole thing and watch the whole thing, you get an achievement. Okay. I was about to ask yeah. you better. That yeah, you, better be one of There's the a lot of things like that too, that you have to wait like an hour in game to see something happen, but you'll wow. get an achievement for it. See, and that's one of those things like, you know, I'm not an achievement hunter myself. Oh, no. Like I don't, I, it's not something that like, man, I've got to, I've got to get all, I've got to get this game to a hundred percent completion. You know, I play it till I'm happy with it. You right. Know? But back in the day, there's a few games that I kind of did that with because it was fun. Yes. But like but, Halo 2 and Halo 3, I would try and get them all. Yeah. But, it, but now like the, the, some of these achievement hunters, I have a friend that I work with who's like really into it. You mm-hmm. know, he has to get everything to a hundred percent completion. I can't imagine having to sit there just like, I guess he'd have to put a timer on and walk away and then do some yeah. dishes and then come back. Yeah. I think in one of them, they literally comment like, you know, 30 minutes in, they're like, uh, I know you're, you're, you're not still in the room anymore. Come back in the room. <laughs> like, I know you're doing whatever in another room, but you, you can come back in here. 
where I was going with that is so like there's these different things you warp in, one of them being movie theater. One of them is like this thing is called Cutie Town. I saw I saw a clip of this. Yeah. I saw a clip of this. Hilarious. <laughs> it is it's fantastic. So it just warps this like a little micro city in and you go up in this little tiny one inch man floating on balloons comes to talk to you about how you know he's he's welcome to cutie town and every it's just full of you know one inch one inch people who live here and we're all happy and everything's peaceful and and we all like love each other and you know it's just such a good time here in cutie town and thank you for visiting and then if you start walking like as soon as you touch a building it crumbles and it's like metal music starts playing and he's like oh my god you just destroyed a building <laughs> and you're killing people the, the hospital we had we had yeah. state-of-the-art health care yeah oh yeah. That, that, that's our that's our power station that, that's our nuclear power station you just destroyed <laughs> our entire thing yeah that's... oh oh you've destroyed our entire city and killed all, all my friends and all my friends are dead and oh my gosh and i don't even want to be alive anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's awesome yeah i saw that I, that seems like a definitely like a very imaginative game um, it is from everything i've seen it I, I beat it the other day and it I, I will say like yeah like it's been a long time since the games made me laugh out loud and like legitimately like the whole story of it, it was hilarious from start to finish and there were so many unexpected references to things and like straight up calling stuff out like it, it is it is fantastic i like that very you know i think uh i never played the south park games but i think they were kind of similar you know where they they well, were yeah. not as like fourth wall breaking, but right. very... I mean, South Park's whole thing is, you know, commentating on IRL society oh, things yeah. that's happening and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't quite break the fourth wall, but they still, you know, hit all the topics and everything. It, it, you know, I hope their success with High on Life and as much media attention as they're getting would, would maybe lead to a Rick and Morty-esque, you know, I think adventure. They had Trover Saves a Universe which was another game, their previous game, but it only, it came out on PSVR. And I don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. PlayStation VR. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. They had their own PlayStation like VR set and stuff and used the little like wand controllers that had the little balls that light up on them. Oh, okay. Um, so it came out for that. And I think it came out later on like other VR platforms on Steam or whatever, but it, I watched some clips from it and it was also really freaking funny because it's from Justin Roiland, yeah. but you know, because of how it came out, it what didn't do great. But this one is like exploding and like is getting fantastic reviews everywhere. And like everybody's raving about it. And good, good, good. Thank you for being unique. Thank you for being funny. Thank you for, um, you know. Like it, it, it purposely takes itself not seriously and, while still being an excellently developed game. And they play into to gamer tropes, which yes. I like, you know, like. <laughs> they straight up called stuff out. And like when like they call out like streamers and various other things, like they're at the very beginning, like your mom leaves a note on the fridge for you, whatever you go down there. It's like your mom's like, you're not going to make any money playing or you're going to be not going to accomplish anything playing video games all day. <laughs> and like streamers are like, okay, well, that's a little deep cut, but thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. You know, be unique. You know, don't the same thing with movies as AAA game developers, just, you know, Make it something that fans enjoy. Right. And, and I think if you have fan service, then you're going to do well. You right. Know? And that's why I kind of like into that, you know, not to, to harp on it. Cause I know, I mean, tons of people play it all over the world, but a lot of sports games, Madden or FIFA and stuff like I never had an interest in them because they're very recycled stuff. Like they're not a lot of changes in them. There was even one, I don't know if it was a FIFA or something, but it was literally the exact same game, yeah. but they just like, change some assets in it and there was like uh images posted that like where they forgot to change one of the assets and it had banners in the game from the previous game so it's literally the same game they just changed some stuff in it yeah i believe that like i i, I played like the early well a the ncaa football games i were like a i really enjoyed those mm -hmm. mainly because i like creating a character taking them through right a career that's a lot of fun yeah and some of the early um and they used to be Madness. more diverse back in the early days, too. Yeah, and they were always putting out something like, this year they have the truck stick, or this one has, like, quarterback vision or whatever. But, yeah, nowadays it seems like it's very, um, it, yeah, it's just recycled material. People know that they're going to get it. They don't care if they complain because maybe next year it'll be better. Maybe right. next year it'll get better. Maybe next year it'll be better. And they're going to keep consuming it because the players change every year. Right. Right, and they know that that's going to be one thing that people are like, well— you know, yeah. Jalen Hurts is the quarterback this year. 
Mm-hmm. I want to see what his rating is. I want to play with the Philadelphia Eagles or whatever. And right. I know um, it's similar to like Call of Duty too. You know, there's yes. a new Call of Duty every single year. Granted, there's three different developers, so there's three iterations, and it really kind of seems like there's two that suck. And then you'll have like the Modern Warfare ones that work really well. This last one didn't really work really well, I guess. No, I should say, we're but still, like, we're, you know, we're game still having good. issues with it. You know, there's yeah. there's a lot of things um, that they can get away with because they're a AAA developer. But again, it, it would yeah. be a death sentence. Some of the things that are going on with it, you know, me me trying to play the campaign, I couldn't play the campaign. Yeah. I would restart my Xbox. I would turn it off. I would, you know do whatever and i would just get stuck at the choose your difficulty screen and there's nothing right. i could do to get around it and i would go on reddit and there would be the same problem with everybody else and they'd be like try this try this try this and you can't get around it there's no reason for that there's especially no reason for such that. a triple a game that has like so much money come on yeah ui you would think would be one of the easier things being to able with. to play the game yes yeah, so <laughs> just being able to play it yeah like if you know in the multiplayer was a little janky at the beginning but it's gotten slightly better but we even had the problem with the dmz mode on the new modern warfare where you know, I couldn't have a custom weapon. You right. Know, I, 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 had, I still had that even after some patches. Like you if you're that. in a party with a couple people, you can't, you know, choose your own specific weapons, which that's kind of the whole big deal with Call of Duty is getting to customize your weapons and upgrade them and use your stuff. Pe- yeah. People like agency. People like agency in things. People want to feel like they're part of it. People want to have a unique thing to them. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that is that is so frustrating for for me to like – Okay, well, I guess I'll just bring in like a level one gun with no attack. I could bring in a weapon, but it, c- it couldn't have any attachments on it. So if I brought in like a level one machine gun, uh, that's fine. But I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't attach attachments after I unlock them in the DMZ mode itself. Otherwise, it wouldn't let me bring that insurance slot in, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. The main agency that like Modern Warfare has brought in, I feel like, is is somewhat uh, obviously the custom classes and the custom weapons, but then. You know, now there's like, hey, look at these big streamers like uh, Steve, like, you know, Thieve guys or whatever, you know, like these big streaming pro players. Oh, like, got in, their, the, like in the pro circuit, like the MLG, or the MLG. MLG guys. I don't know if the MLG is the, <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> the term anymore. That no. used to be the term, but uh, uh, esports. Esports. That's it. Yeah. Some of these esports yeah. creators, you know, and like they put out these uniforms for them and people get to follow along with that, which they like a lot. But. You know, how cool would it be to have like a Ghost Recon-esque player customization, character customization, where we're not just limited to like this one actor? You know, you could keep the same. I imagine you could keep some of the same um, motion capture stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like this is like the big guy or whatever. You choose a body style, but it would be nice to be able to. Maybe but, I don't yeah, want to look I was, like. I was saying that's the thing, like, especially in the last one, for they, they basically filled it up with a bunch of like influencers. Yeah. And stuff. And like, I don't, I don't really want to play as an influencer. Like, yeah, give yeah. me like, they have all this, this gun customization stuff. Give me in-depth character, character customization. Yeah. You know, and, and like, I, I liked some of the influencers. Like I remember like, oh, when the, when the real world tactical guy dropped, oh, yeah. I was like, oh man, that's, yeah, a, he's cool. He's a cool big guy. Like, I like that dude, you know, I'm a big dude, but yeah. then the, uh, <laughs> you know, one of the only unique agency things that he has is like your kill, ki- like your assassination technique. Right. That's when you really get to see the flavor of that person. Didn't he crush you with like a cinder block it was or just something? A cinder block. And I was like, well, maybe that's what he liked. That's what he's like. I want to yeah. kill him with a cinder block. But, but he's like a pretty, like, he's not just some big dude. He's like a super agile, huge, strong oh, man. Oh, yeah. It would have been cooler to see some like more unique. Than just than just the same old uh, kind of motion with a cinder block this time. Right, right. But yeah, like character customization in games is, you know, like obviously like some are more in depth than others, but that's always a a, a fascinating uh, thing in a lot of games that people enjoy. And I know like I've spent many hours in some like Skyrim or some other RPGs. You know, like some of them are like way advanced. Even for me that like you can they have all the sliders and stuff that you can sit there and adjust, you know, every aspect of them. But mm-hmm. and sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming, but, you know, some amount to kind of again, back to that immersion thing I was talking about feeling like you're part of the deal. Yeah. Just being able to change a little bit what you look like and stuff is nice. It is. Yeah. What do you think? What's your favorite game like that you were you customized it? You really like the way your character looked and you felt like. Like, this is my guy. And it almost makes you want to play it more. Do you have, like, a favorite? Uh, mm, 
I know like the first thing possible had, it wasn't very in depth and I don't know that it was definitely the most robust, but the first thing possible had was mass effect. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you couldn't really, I mean, you could change them a good bit, but I specifically remember, you know, I, I my character for the Paragon playthrough and my character for the Renegade thing looked different, but like I felt it fit the motif that I was kind of playing through on that. And that was really nice. Grand Theft Auto, like Grand Theft Auto Online, that particularly too, like that had a good amount of customization and stuff and all the outfits and stuff that I felt like, you know, with my character had some, you know, identif like identity to it that was different from everybody else. I didn't like the, uh, like if your mom looks like this, you look like a crackhead type thing. But yeah, <laughs> that was no, kind of annoying. For, yeah, for sure. They did a decent job with that, you know. Um, you know, one of the early games I remember where I thought character customization was one of the, like the coolest things ever. And this is somewhat nostalgia because obviously it's not going to hold up to modern games. Mm. Were like the early WWE games. Oh, I was going to mention that as well. The like, early WWE I, games being able to, like, I remember making a guy and I was like, this guy looks like a nin, like, you know, and you have so, like, a ninja and you've got, like, all these okay. cool looking Back in things. the day with those early ones, like, I legit, I made, like, Sub Zero, I made Scorpion, I made all these characters from all these different fictional properties and stuff that I would make them, like, all of these characters and then pit them against each other in, like, Hell in the cell match or something. And even be able to program their, their moves, you know, yeah. being able to say, well, like B is like a, a, a right hook and A is like, I remember making boxing characters. Yeah. I never really made pre-made people like people that already exist yeah, in yeah. other worlds, but I liked making my own guy. I'm like this guy's a boxer. Exactly. So yeah. I would make everything like ninja guy. Related. Yeah, exactly. Or something. They had a lot of like, you know, karate or Kung Fu moves or whatever. Like, yeah. Talk, when it comes to characters and customization, they were like on point and they have been on point forever. Oh yeah. And, you know, nowadays, the new ones, you can customize so much stuff. You can customize, you know, everything about their intro down to, like, the lights. You can even upload custom, you like... upload custom music. Like, music or imagery that show on the screens and that are people holding up on the signs in the crowds and stuff. And, like, it is it is crazy. It, and I feel like that's something neat that they've played to their to their, their base, you know? Right. Um, and being able to, uh, again, that immersion kind of stuff, like, you can spend hours on that, you know, making it exactly the match you want it to be and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also sometimes I think, you know, I'm trying to remember, I think, uh, I'm not playing like a career mode in a WWE game or whatever in a while, but you know, uh, I remember even all the max your stats out and like have like be God or be Superman, essentially, you know, be, be somebody oh, yeah. super powerful, but, um, you know, without having to go through a whole thing. And if you want to play an exhibition match, you're going to throw the big show. That, that, that kind of cell, leads you know? me to think that, I, I do kind of miss with games too is that you don't really have much anymore, but it was always fun with things like cheat codes. And cheat stuff codes. God, yes. They're the awesome. You know, many times like, or like even new game plus, like some things still have that, but like where you play through a game once, you know, and you, and you do it the way it's designed and, you know, level up and get stronger at the thing. But then I always love games that then give you the option. All right. Well, now that you've played it, now you can just go in and, you know, have God mode or have all these you know, infinite ammo or like super strength or all this kind of stuff. And you can just have fun with it, you know, kind of a sandbox sort of deal. Yeah. You, you know, and, and, and let's be honest, there's, there's a stigma with cheat codes. There is a stigma with cheating mm -hmm. on, on things, but as long as you're not cheating, like in a multiplayer arena where it affects somebody yeah, yeah, else's yeah. happiness or whatever, yeah, I, who cares? I, yeah. I say that if, strictly. Yeah. And I'm, I'm all about that too. Like in a single player campaign kind of thing or something like that then yeah, like go wild, like go, break the game, go crazy with it, you know, go, mods, whatever you want to do, as long as it makes it fun for you, that's all that matters. And I think that's one of the things that sometimes the video game community versus like the tabletop RPG community um, mm. could catch up on is, or the, you know, the video game errs could catch up with the TTRPG people is they understand in the total, you know, in Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder, this, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, giving your character, having like all this stuff, like, you know, you want to start out as something cool, then maybe you get to or whatever, and that you wind up being overpowered later. But sometimes you start out at a high level mm -hmm. and uh, they don't care how you play, you know, they don't, right. that's the big thing. They don't care that you play this way is whatever is good for you. For the most part, most DMs are like that. Most tables are like that. But a lot of times if you're like, well, how do I get cheats? And you're trying to look something up on Reddit, they're just like, don't. Right. You're stupid. Just play it. Just play it the way it's meant to be played. And I don't want to, you know, right. like, no. I, you know, one of my favorite things was, uh, I'm a big mountain blade war band. Fan, right. Right. And I always played it. I played the vanilla. Right. You know, exactly. there, there is no finish to the game necessarily until you call it. You can just decide my, my character's retired in the first right. one. But the, the mods on there were awesome. And I, I really loved the clash of Kings mod. 
and it was a Game of Thrones universe. Oh. And added all these different, um, you know, the world changed. You had, um, you know, all these new armies and new soldiers. And there was a couple of new modes to it, too, where you could just, you could enter a Lord's army and be a soldier versus having to have your own people and you're carting them around or whatever. But it was so easy to just tilde key, cheat menu, enter. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And I, I liked it because sometimes I wanted to start off as the king. Right. So I would just load up with all the best stuff. I would make my character high level. I would take over a couple castles, create my own kingdom. Right. And then start playing. Right. You know, cause I didn't have that option from the get go. And I liked having that kind of thing. Well, I would, I would do a similar kind of thing in something Minecraft or like Ark survival. You know, those kind of things were like, I would go in, you know, and enable the cheat or creative mode or whatever it is build a base of some kind or some kind of big castle or something and then take it out and put it back in survival mode and then you've kind of got this cool base to operate out of and then just play the game as normal and kind of get yourself started and yeah. then and then you go in and then, then that can be a lot of fun because a lot of those things you know yeah it can after you've kind of played it you know a number of hours it, it's kind of you recognize the tediousness of just resource gathering yes you know like i just kind of grind like 15 hours to get to where i start having fun Whereas like, eh, I'm going to skip all that, go into creative mode, build my starting thing that I always kind of build to start out with. And now I can get into the nitty gritty of stuff. Exactly. Because I, I think that's the reason why those are mechanics that the games have in them. Because I think it is, I think it is a, a thing that holds people back. Like, God, I don't want to try to find 50 metal, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. And, and then get killed by a T-Rex right. or a, like a, a Therizinosaurus. Right. You know, <laughs> the tickle chickens just coming at right. you through the woods, you the know. murder chickens. Murder chickens. Yeah. But the, yeah, a hundred percent. I think that's like a huge uh, thing that, you know, I remember when I've not played Minecraft since you installed it on my computer before I it mean, was. Yeah, that was like a long time ago, like beta time or something 2006 or two like 2007 like something really early because yeah, i remember yeah. it was like a windowed mode yeah it didn't have half the things yeah but it had that creative mode built into it and yeah. that was i tried playing the survival and i was like eh, don't yeah. like it then i was like oh i could build a big square house you know because i'm not the best builder of course <laughs> but i could build this big square house and maybe try to make it look cool and it was cool to me right. and i'm glad that they had that there and it doesn't matter how you want to play games. It doesn't matter what other people think about it. Right. You play what you want to play and enjoy it. I think it's, that's what I think matters. Is if you're having fun, you know, even if it is kind of game breaking, but you're having fun with it, then, you know, I would think as a game developer, like, okay, cool. I mean, like, yeah, I understand you from an artistic thing. You know, people, they'll spend hours creating the story. And I get that for, you know, again, like a game, like mass effect or stuff. But I think it's, I think it's important for games to like, know what they're trying to be something like a mass effect that is very story kind of almost movie sort of thing yes that has that but then a game like arc or minecraft or something like that where they kind of understand what they know what they are and they give you those tools to just like yeah we know you just want to build castles you know and stuff so get yeah, go right ahead you know build what you want like i think that yeah uh knowing that and stuff it, it it's pretty nice yeah, I, I like it when you can make a game yours. When you can feel like you feel like, oh, this is my game. Like I'm into it. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm immersed. You know, that's another huge thing is is like the immersion factor of it. Right. Because there's a lot of things that sometimes even AAA developers like it, it just takes me out of it. You know. Right. Which again, that's you had mentioned earlier D and D, and that's one thing that I've uh, we've got a couple campaigns right now, and that's one thing I've been really enjoying. That is the talk about immersion and world building and making stuff your own, like. That is, that's kind of like the prime deity of that kind of thing. Cause you're, can, you know, talk about Chico and stuff. You can literally do anything you can think of. Yes. And it's often up to the GM to, you know, if they allow it or not. But in that vein, the GM can make the world however they want, whatever they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, and whether it's pre written stuff, you know, I like that currently in 5e, in the 5e system, fifth edition for Dungeons and Dragons, that it is. Even when you read a pre-written module, it still wants you to make it your own. You know, it's yeah. not hard, you know, because people will play through campaigns. Maybe they like the Lost Minds of Fendelver, right? Mm -hmm. And they want to play through it as three different characters from like level, I think it's like a level one to five adventure or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, if they want to do that, you know, 
add if you're the GM for that, change some things up. You know, there's yeah. I think there, I think, and this is this is a spoiler alert, and I think anybody can see that this is a it's a very popular thing. But I think there's like a goblin uh, ambush at the very beginning of it, right? And there's like three goblins. Yeah, it's or a four very t- t- typical thing. The very typical you know, like goblin, ra- either that or wolves or something. Wolves. Why not? You know, change it up so it's people. If somebody else is looking at it, they don't know. Take that away from them. Take their ability mm-hmm. to read that away and really, you know, be somebody that puts that, you know, thought into it, like where it's like unique and it, maybe it doesn't feel like just a pre-written module, you know, like, right. I, like there, there are things that right now, you know, you play in one of my campaigns mm-hmm. um, and hopefully we'll have a second campaign coming up where I'm GMing soon. But there are things I know that you are scared of personally, because we've been best friends for a long time. Right. There's things I know that other people are scared of, like in their day-to-day lives. Yeah. And so I know that I can add spiders right. or centipedes or those kind right. of things that people, ugh, that yeah. irks them about it. I know that I could put you in a situation in a cave where there's a giant spider. Right. There's a, or a million small spiders ugh. or medium sized spider. Exactly. Yeah. And I know that I can give you that real world. That like, kind of heebie jeebies sort of like that. Yeah. Obviously yeah, it's just a game, but it's going to, you know, give you that kind of like hesitancy and kind of creep factor. And, and again, like you, have that immersion because like i'm going to be kind of creeped out by it in real life so that again adds to that immersion and kind of uh, decision making and stuff which is kind of cool yeah exactly exactly and, and then you also have that that adds into the role playing as well because maybe your character your big minotaur character isn't right. scared of spiders but right. I'm, i've got to try to fight through that exactly to I make still... him not scared but again if i'm playing playing character that is scared or something like yeah like that's real easy to play. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's kind of cool. But yeah, being able to tailor that um, to each, you know, if you do have multiple people, you know, multiple characters in the campaign and stuff playing, like you can uh, adjust and modify it to like tailor suit it for everybody. You know, when it comes to video games and stuff like that, you know, yeah, like, you know, certain people like what they like, but you know, a particular game like Call of Duty is really only going to apply to a certain subset of people. Yeah. And a lot of people buy it. And you know what? If you want to button mash, jump strafe, right. you know, duck and dodge and like jump around corners and shoot people on on small maps and stuff, if that's your thing, yeah. or vice versa in like a war zone match, good for you. Happy for you. This goes back to it. Play the game that you want to play. Yeah. You know, if you want to be a drop shot guy, do it. If you want to camp, camp. Right. Don't worry about what other people say. But I... I want, you know, me personally, I like playing those games. I like doing fun things. I like getting the AC 130 and boom, 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 boom. And like, Hey, look who it is. It's me. You know, (laughs) you're killed. I'm your kill cam, you know, but the, the, I really want some new RPG games where there's a, uh, some of the things that we had, like, you know, Mass Effect was it? was it Xbox? It was three, yeah. one of the first games on it 360. Was, first Mass Effect, it was like, yeah, a launch title for the 360. It was a launch title for 360. And if you guys have never played the, the, the Mass Effect campaign, you guys are missing Ugh. out. It is so good. I, I, it's I, amazing. I've downloaded the, the, um, what is it? The edition? Uh, legendary edition or legacy edition, legacy or edition whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm excited to play one through three again. Um, you know, Mass Effect one, I almost didn't play it because I, I was an idiot and I couldn't find legendary the, edition, legendary edition. I couldn't find the pathway to mm. get further in the level after like the first little tactical engagement you get into where you pick up uh, Ashley. I think, yep, yep, yep. Uh, I couldn't figure out what where to, to do, go, where yeah. to go. And that, that, that almost, I played it twice. And I was like, I'm going to give it one more shot. And I finally found it. And then I never stopped playing it. And I loved it. And even my yeah. wife, you know, who doesn't um, play video games, finished all three of them. She's got I right. think, two playthroughs through, through Mass Effect 1 through 3. Wow. And, you know, being able to port your character too. Again, huge. a big thing, like, huge. about that immersion stuff and how you, like, identify, like, this is my character. You know, this is who I am and stuff. That yeah, being able to carry that through multiple games is awesome and and just compoundly builds on that and stuff that by the time you get to the third game and you've been through all these adventures with this person same thing with kind of like again back to like the D &D thing like when you've got your character like you you know those campaigns you know they can go on for years and stuff 
you talk about getting attached to somebody mm -hmm. you've got your character that you've been playing for years and going through all these adventures and stuff and you're really attached to them and that makes it that much more harsh if you know one of the characters happens to die in the game or something like it's such a big deal and that's something that mass effect does really well is mm -hmm. the you know like in the second one you know if you don't make the right choices not only you will die but all of these other crewmates that you invested time into, you've upgraded them, you've done whatever with, they will die too. And there's no like, sorry for you. It just happens. You know? Right. Yeah. You know, spoiler for an old game, but yeah, at the end, in the last mission, like depending on the choices you can make, um, yeah, like one or almost like all of your party and your team can like all die. Yeah. And, and you know, luckily I, and it was so serious for me, you know, he, and this is one of those things, right? This is, I, I, I didn't play it maybe as it was intended. Mm -hmm. I, I looked up cause I didn't want him to die. I did the same I thing. I liked the character I was like, what so choices? much. Which one should I choose? Yeah. What, what choices do I make to get out of this alive? Yeah. And that's good. Good job on creating a game that people feel like that about things that don't exist about pixels. Right. Yeah, it's just, just digital stuff, but yeah, like the investment into these characters. Yeah, out of many games I've played, yeah, like as far as attachment to character, other char NPCs even, and your own character and stuff, that one probably sticks with me as uh, that I remember that yeah. I had such an attachment to some of those people or like the relationships in the games and stuff. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any other ones that really had that, and there hasn't been a lot. I can't think of another one where I was just like, man... I, I don't want, was it Tachanka or, you know, or somebody like that? I don't want well, that. Tachanka was from Rainbow <laughs> Six. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mean like Rex? Rex. <laughs> I didn't, he, he's from, what, what, where's Rex from? To, he's from somewhere like that, the name Tachanka or something. Oh. Look up the home world. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I didn't want him to die. In the, you know, like there's, in the first one, there's, there's opportunities where you're going to lose people. The Krogan. And, the Krogan, but where were they from? Uh, was the homeworld of the Krogan. Um, I'll look it up. Just okay. But, you know, there, there were times where the, um, you know, I didn't want them to get hurt. Oh, his name was Tachanka. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Tachanka is the planet. Oh, no, that's the planet. That's the planet. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not You're stupid. Totally right. I'm not 100%. I, a little bit. But, you know, I loved it. I loved that those characters all had their own personality. And then, like... If you were going to romance one of them, there was, it was one of those uh, things where you had to actually like lead up with, you know, yeah. like if you want to be with Liara, you only yeah, get it, to... it was a multi-game thing yes. that you had to like, yeah, make decisions from the first game through. Also, just for clarification, it was Tachanka versus Tuchanka, T-A versus T-U. Okay. Tachanka well, is from Rainbow Six Siege. Sometimes vowels are yeah. hard. Tuchanka is the... Krogan home world. Both Russian and uh, <laughs> and Krogan are made up in my mind. <laughs> Prove to me that Russia exists. Right. right. I've never been there. I've never been there. It doesn't. Yeah. It's a fantasy world. <laughs> but yeah, like you had to, it was a multi-game decision-making stuff. It hasn't been many games. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of other games like that that have stuff to carry over. I think like, I mean, I was going to say, I know things like Dragon Age had similar things, but that was also a Bioware game. Yeah. That, you know, stuff carried over from game to game. But I can't off the top of my head think of any other that I've played that had that same sort of concept where something carries over from one game to another. And you get to choose a lot of stuff with those characters, too. You right. Know? Like, I remember being in Halo. You know, there's the memes about it. But I remember playing Halo 1 and 2 and 3. And if you see a Marine with a sniper rifle, it's, oh, yeah. it's not, you know, and you don't have one, it's probably not going to go well for you. You know, right. like you're probably about to get bashed in the back of the head because I want it. I don't care about right. them. that. That's what they added later where you can just trade weapons with yes. them. Yes. <laughs> and even when you do that, even in Infinite, I've, I was playing with it some yesterday when we did that, that when you take, if you take a sniper rifle or like snipers or rocket launchers or something like a heavy weapon or something like, oh man, you're sticking me with this. You <laughs> yeah. give them just like a battle rifle or something like, all right, well, take care of that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. That, that, you know, but with these ones, it's like, man, I really want them to be cool. I'm, you know, this is, this is, uh, I'm such a huge fan of the Mass Effect series and, um, I think they still hold up. I think mm -hmm. they still do oh, really yeah. well. You know, even the first one, Everything was so unique. The, you know, me, I'm the Mr. Dungeon Master, the lore. Yeah, lore's always been a big deal for you. 
It, it is for sure. I, I like knowing about things. I love that it had a codex with a, a voice actor who read to you about everything, mm -hmm. even worlds that were small and were not like, you know, inhabitable. Right. And Insig it's driving. insignificant things that you couldn't even land on them. Even some ones like you couldn't get any resources from, like they still had like this whole bio as far as their population and their economies and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And it feels good. And then you're like, well, well, you know, it's nice. It, it feels good. It feels like, oh, this is a real world. I'm immersed it's fleshed in out. It. Yeah. Yeah. And then I get to make decisions that impact things. And you definitely get to feel like the hero, even when you do bad stuff. And mm -hmm. if you do really stupid stuff, you're going to lose people. And I think that that is one of the big things is maybe you don't um, die in combat or whatever, where you just hit it. But there is a chance that somebody dies in Mass Effect 2 or Mass Effect right. 1. They're gone. And those things have like, you know, a butterfly effect throughout all three games. Yes, the butterfly effect. That's and, right. And by Mass Effect 3, maybe that that changes your ending. Something that you did in Mass Effect 1. One. And I think that is so neat. It's a really good fan service. Yeah. And I would like to see more things like that. I'd like, like to see a lot of things like that too. Um, I mean, I, I feel like obviously like RPGs are best suited for that kind of stuff that allows you to make decisions in games and, you know, different dialogue options or choose whether like a good path or a bad path or any of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Like those are kind of obviously best suited for that sort of thing. But, uh, and obviously, you know, you got to have like a sequence to games, like something like, you know, Call of Duty or just a shooter. It isn't, you can't really do that kind of stuff in there. But yeah, like I, I'd like to see, yeah, see more RPGs have that kind of carryover factor like that. And if there are some, you know, other good games like that, they have that kind of stuff in and that we haven't mentioned, let us know, you know, I might like to check that out. Always looking for a new, uh, game to check out for sure. Um, but well, e even like the, um, high on life, right. Wasn't as far as I understand it, it is not necessary. Would you call it an RPG? No, it's, no. it's, 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 it's a, like an arcadey shooter, arcadey shooter, kind of thing. but we get dialogue options, right? Yeah. That's yeah, neat. That's there are dialogue options. They're very basic, but yeah, it, and it's more for comedy stuff. And like the choices you make don't really make a difference and stuff, but it's still. But there. it makes a difference to you, right? Right. When you choose it, you actually have to think about it. And I think that's yeah. important. You know, what, what kind of game do we have to be, or like what kind of story do we need that keeps us from skipping through the cinematics? Right. The, the games that have stuck with me the longest are those ones that give me those options and stuff, even stuff like Skyrim or Fallout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those also have a lot of, you know, they don't care obviously from, you know, game to game, but even within the game, like decisions you make early on, you know, in Skyrim, you know, when you're talking to one of the Jarls and stuff, you can make a decision with him that'll, you know, pay off like way later in the game if he's even still a, a Jarl or not. Yeah. And you see now, like even people in Skyrim, you know, or some of the other Elder Scrolls games, they find things that, um, you know, I never knew, and this is a spoiler alert for Skyrim. If you've never played Again, it, a game from 2011, from 2011, even though it's still being remade and <laughs> they just come out with the most recent, they one. come out with like, yeah, an anniversary edition, a, well, what would it be at this point from 2011? So like a 10, 10 year anniversary, something like that. Yeah. Kind of thing it, into it, 2021. And you know, I never knew there's a civil war in that game. And I never knew that there was like a third option. You either help one side win or help the other side win. And did you not know this? Is there a third option? There is option? a peace option. There is a thing where you meet and you can stop the civil war what? completely. Yes. I've played that game. I don't know how many times. Yes. I don't know if I knew that. There is. And I think this is unmodded. I've seen it before. There is a, there is a way that you like essentially bring both parties to the table and, I think you have to choose one side or the other to begin with and you play through one or two of their missions, but eventually, yes, it, neither one has to be totally destroyed. Wow. Yeah. Man, I might have to play Skyrim again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and God, I saw I just now, like in my uh, YouTube algorithm, it's like, hey, let's hook them on, let's hook them on Skyrim again. Let's like, let's, I, yeah. let's put the feelers out there. And, uh, you know, they're like, hey, they've added new houses. I'm like, oh, man, so, yeah, now I want them. I want yeah, the see, new houses. They, they added their, they did this you know, new revamped version and they added in stuff that a lot of the most popular mods added to the game that they just made it a part of it um, in there. Um, things like an alternate start. Yes. I think, I think that that's part of this new version that you can just choose. You don't have to have the 
you know, the memefied waking up in the back of the <laughs> wagon. You're, hey, you're finally, finally awake. awake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That has been in everything, which speaking of uh, funny games and things that are memefied, like there was a, uh, a goat simulator three just recently came out, oh, man. which I've watched some, uh, like, uh, some, uh, streamers playing that the other day. And it's, it, it, it we talk about not taking yourself seriously. That game is absurdly ridiculous, but hilarious. Um, I, I bought it. I think I remember buying it for us. Well, we, like the first one the we first played time. a little bit. Yeah, the, the third one yeah, just came out, but it's um the way that it, like if you're playing multiplayer, the way that it starts out, it literally fades from black, and, and you're four goats sitting in the back of a wagon, <laughs> <laughs> or you're you're in like or you're in like a, a wagon being pulled by a tractor going to a farm. <laughs> <laughs> and you're oh my just God. a couple of goats and you're like it's literally the skyrim intro oh man that is awesome yeah, great job guys yeah, whoever, is, guys and gals whoever did that yeah freaking goat simulator yeah but i'm like that is that is on point that's awesome man, i love that i love that i'm gonna have to look that up because i, I want to see that now yeah that's pretty funny um especially if they had like an ulfric storm cloak goat you know who's like mouth is bandaged <laughs> you know mouth is taped up so he can't scream and something I don't like know that recall, but maybe there's a mod for it i don't know maybe. if you're a mod creator maybe you add that for me i don't know. right but yeah this uh, yeah that new skyrim version uh I was a debate like i've already bought that game like four times i think i bought so, it on pc i bought it on uh, xbox like two or three times at this point I know I bought the the CD on 360 or whatever back yeah. in the day. Um, I don't know. We do have game share on. Maybe I'll have to just fork you 20 bucks. Right. And <laughs> just so just so I can have a new house that's almost exactly like the other houses just to hang my, my same armor up in. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I, and speaking of remaster things, something that I haven't played in RPGs is that new, uh, the next-gen console version of The Witcher 3. Mm. Uh wild hunt that came out and like that apparently i've seen a lot of things on reddit the remaster for the witcher is like amazing and it like the graphics look so much better than they did you know and everybody raves about that being one of the best rpg games of the last like decade and i i, I tried playing through once before and got like maybe a couple hours in and kind of lost my interest but that's, that's one of those games too that people say that you kind of have to you know like at, at hour five or six it starts getting really good which is kind of annoying, but like with such a, you know, a 150 hour game like that, I, I kind of understand. Well, I th maybe that could be something that we you do your gameplay on then. You know, I, right. I think one of the things we want to do with this, this podcast is also let you guys see how we do it. Yeah, there'll definitely be a supplemental content uh, as far as things like gameplay and stuff that uh, we'll upload to uh, some various channels and stuff we'll let you know about. You can uh, also follow us uh, to get updates about that stuff on um, Twitter and Instagram at Geek ETC Geek Etc Podcast. Yeah, Geek Twitter ETC and Podcast. Instagram. And then if you guys want to email us, uh, Geek ETC Podcast at gmail.com. Um, yeah, you can send us emails there for uh, topics or suggestions and things and uh, for games to play or check out. Reviews. Yeah. We'll dive into all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, I think that'd be fun to watch you play. I would watch you play the Witcher for the first time. I've not played it. I did the same exact thing as you. I got yeah. a couple hours in. Cause it was on game pass at one point and I just downloaded it to try it out, but uh, they took it off there. I think because they knew people would buy it for this remastered mm, of version. Smart. Which makes sense. Which makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I want yeah. developers to get their money, you know, cause yeah. they make things we enjoy. And as long as, you know, it is not something that is just mass produced with no thought given to it. Hey, make your money kings yeah. and queens like get your stuff and like that you don't quite farm it as much as you know again skyrim's getting a little ridiculous at this point the number of versions just, like you can play it on a samsung t fridge at this point <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly that that is funny i think i literally saw somebody somehow i don't know how they did it, but they hacked it and where th that opening scene where you're in the wagon they were showing it on a pregnancy test that's, that's on the little funny. screen that's on there. That, oh, on like a sonogram machine or something like that? Like literally just like the kind you like pee on or whatever. Like oh. it was literally like it has a tiny screen and it had the freaking Skyrim opening on it. That's got to be dub. That's got to be. That's yeah, just got the screen on it. It was legit. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how they did it. It may, They may have just like, you know, captured that video file and uploaded it on there. Like you couldn't actually play it on it. But I thought just, that was just a mean, chemical reaction. As a, some of them are, but I think some of the more advanced ones. You know, it has a little screen that says like a yes or no. It's like a little LCD screen. Yeah, man. I think uh, I think that would be fun. I, w I would watch you play that. 
I think it'd be fun to see you play through that because you are coming to it. Now, of course, it is hard. Like, I've not played every Fallout game. Mm. I've played New Vegas. Yeah, I played, I played some of three. A good bit of three. I played a good bit of three. New Vegas all the way through. I a played that, times. yeah, a couple times through. And Fallout 4 a bunch. And I like Fallout 4 with all those mods. Again, that goes back to those mods that you yes. play through it once, but then you can hop in, download the cheat room yes. app, kind of that and Skyrim both. And then you can just like have infinite you know, power armor stuff and ammo and all these crazy guns. And build cool bases. You know, yeah. who doesn't want to have a cool base? Now, if you, when you want to play that survival mode or do whatever, mm. sure, like slum it out, have your, your terrible little ramshackle right, right, right. base and where all your other people are just living in filth and you know right. they smell terrible. <laughs> but I want, I like, you know, I like the way the Institute feels. I like that sterile, clean feeling. Right. When you and then the futuristicness, yeah, I like that. And then going out into the swamp, the the radioactive swamp and city of Boston, and Fallout Four, right? Yeah, I think um, I think it'd be fun watching because I never I never played Witcher Two. I played Witcher Three a little bit. Got also had the issues with the um, eh, kind of got stuck after the tutorial. I think I stopped playing. Yeah, I would like to see it all the way through because i do like this show i love the right. show yeah the show's good well, at least up to what will be season three will be good but then you yeah. know that's a whole thing about that new actor taking over yeah we can talk about that another time yeah because that'll take a long time you know i'm, I'm yeah. a big henry cavill fan yeah. and you know i've heard i don't know henry personally if if he wants to hang out sometime I'm down <laughs> with it. i can make my calendar open but you know right the you know, if you want, if you if you want to play 40k and teach me how to play that, I'm all about oh, yeah, that. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, you know, from what I've heard, you know, him leaving on personal grounds as a fan, if he did that for real, wow! Somebody that turned down money to do something they love, that's something I I'm a big fan of. Right. But and speaking of like base building, creative things, and stuff like that, that uh, I've been I hop back into No Man's Sky, mm -hmm. and they just had a, their recent update that they added creative stuff in there too that you can you know that's a lot of resource gathering too but you can completely go into a creative mode and everything's free and you have infinite resources and you can do a lot of base building in there as well and you know just buy whatever ships you want and explore freely so that's kind of cool too that, oh, okay. that's open that up for a lot of people who haven't played that due to the resource gathering you know kind of grind of that that you can just hop in you know get whatever you need and just start exploring the infinite galaxy in there so that's kind of fun yeah space games you know like w when we think of sci-fi and even in movies you know we think of space most of the time and uh outside of like the fantasy quote-unquote sci-fi like the height i hate that that sometime is is the way it's categorized sci-fi slash fantasy because we all there's so much of that out there but realistically there are not a lot of like hey let's get in a spaceship and go do something right you know and i love that you know, I don't, you know, my PC is not good enough to play Star Citizen <laughs> and, you know, I'm sure people have their issues with it, but they had big ideas. They crowdfunded it. They, they had some really cool ship design. You know, I, I like that kind of thing. Elite Dangerous, yeah. uh, No Man's Sky. I like, you know, and I'm interested to see where BioWare is going right with, uh, is it BioWare or Ubisoft? For uh, Starfield? Starfield, that's No, right. that's uh, Bethesda. Bethesda, okay, I'm stupid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. I know a lot of people are excited for that. But um, when that comes out, um, I'll definitely uh, be ready to, to check that out for sure. Mm -hmm. I know that they have a couple, they, there were some complaints about that as far as, you know, when you, you can't just seamlessly go from planet to space, that it does like a, a tra it like transitions that you take off, but then suddenly you're just in space. Yeah. So that's kind of lame because like there's there's something awesome about again No Man's Sky or Star Citizen or something where you're you're flying in space on your ship and you just seamlessly land like go through the atmosphere and land down on the planet. Yeah, that's like, really awesome. Like Elite Dangerous, same thing. Yeah, yeah. You know they they added um... in the Odyssey update they added where you can get out of the ships and just walk around and stuff. I haven't played that yet, but I want to check that out as well. Even before the Odyssey though, you could still land. On, yeah, you know you had the the giant um, carriers and stuff that you or not the carriers the the um, I guess they have carriers now too. Like space stations or space stations and those kind of things, but they they also have planets and. Boy, the first time I tried doing that, it didn't go well for me. But right, um, yeah, I mean, I really like it. I want more of that. I want some type of multiplayer. Have ship, will travel, will make money. Yeah, with base building, 
my one of my major hangups i don't love the art style of no man's sky but right i mean i feel like you might should give that a, a shot again because they have updated have a few times and, and I, i'm really i am like really enjoying it the, yeah you might have to take me through that then I'm, you might have to yeah. take me through that i think the ui was also a little janky for which me. They, they've updated that too in okay this last stuff they've changed kind of inventory stuff and made it a lot more seamless to have to deal with and whatnot so that's kind of nice that's that is good yeah i'll have to give that a try for sure um you know uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else like those three that that kind of accomplishes the same thing. Mm, not that I can think of off the top of my Space head. Space engineers, does that do that? Uh, that 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 has definitely some kind of building aspects like that. You can actually build your ships in, you know, kind of all a Minecraft, you know, piecemeal sort of thing that you have the different modules and stuff and you can build, you know, ships to whatever you want, but and that's more kind of what that's about. Um ever... I guess I guess Eve too, right? Oh, I don't even know about Eve online, like I know that's a huge thing that's been going on for a yeah. long. Like they had some, like it was a couple of years ago or something, but I heard about, you know, some big like battle. space battle yeah. that happened that was like years in the making that was like enormous scale, like well, thousands of players and stuff all in this huge space battle deal. It was. And are you familiar with what, what also took place? There was also like a real world loss of money. Like oh, hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars and like real, like it actually cost would be the actual cost of it. Like it was significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy, man. We, we live in a great time and there's a lot of good stuff out there. And I mean, I, I'm yeah. so excited to talk about this on, on yeah. our show, uh, all the different things, um, and really put it into, and like share it with, share it with people that have similar interests, you know? Yeah. I like, you know, obviously like a, this is a, a, a big, um, interest to a lot of people, things, video games, movies, uh, in, all things geek, you know, you can geek out about anything. And yes. so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to definitely having the conversations about that kind of stuff and interested to see how, uh, people respond to it. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, you know, just plug in the show a little bit We're we're wanting to do reviews and, and look at different things and, um, and hear from you guys as well. And have kind of like a somewhat fan curated experience as well as like really getting into, Josh and I, who are just best buddies who love this kind of thing. And this is what we talk about on the reg. Yeah. And, you know, we yeah. want I'm excited wanna... to share that with other people because I, I find it interesting. I know, you know, other people will too. Yeah. And I love, I love talking about things. I love talking about this, obviously, because we're doing this. Right. You know, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where we can go on and on. Um, right. Yeah. All righty. Well, I think that'll probably wrap it up for today. Yeah, hundred percent for episode one. And um, you know, guys, just remember, uh, guys and gals, we're gonna have the um, we're gonna have the Geek ETC podcast, Instagram, Twitter, and Gmail. If you want to send us anything to talk about or um, something that you find interesting, send us an email, send us a message on there. We're gonna be trying to keep those those social media posts updated and kind of go over some of what the show has. And um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time. All right.